Give me a show of hands if you remember what you ate for breakfast today. Now keep your hand up if you believe it has had an impact on your day thus far. All right, now leave your hand up if you believe that impact was life-changing. <laughs> wow, some of you probably had some pretty remarkable croissants for breakfast. But funnily enough, according to a study on the legal rulings of parole boards in 2011, they found that the probability of a favorable ruling dropped from 65 to almost 0%, from the first ruling to the last. And that following a food break, these positive outcomes return to normal. After repeated decision making, judges become tired, hungry, distracted. This is also known as the irrational hungry judge effect, whereby judges prefer to stick with the status quo and disregard any independent case-by-case -case review. Studies have also shown that favorable rulings take longer than unfavorable rulings. And so if you know that your own decision is holding up lunchtime, wouldn't you want things to go just that little bit faster? Of course, this is an example, a generalization. Not all judges operate in this way. But can they really be to blame for being human? This is just a passive outcome, or even an active one um, at times. And so if justice is what the judge ate for breakfast, our efforts to create a better society, best spent working, following the rules, or making sure key decision makers are well fed. Surprisingly, that's exactly what happens at times. Ever wonder why a client is so kindly invited out for a meal right before being offered a new service? Out of pure satisfaction with a nice meal inside of them, they'll be inclined to accept a more easygoing agreement simply because they feel good. At that moment, the brain is tricked into believing that what they have been offered is equally as good as they feel. Where under a different light, that same proposal could and potentially would have been turned down. This type of passive or even active influence at times has become an accepted part of business practice. It's even encouraged. But in more dire circumstances, like that of the judge's rulings, should both parties not stand on a level playing field? Human, human decision-making is filled with bias. Our courts are no exception. They're in part impacted by subjective thinking and partially guided by intuition. In a world where things are ever more operated by technology, shouldn't we too have an impact on where things are going and what is being said? So we've seen such a digital divide within the way technology has been growing. You can see so simply that in your phone, in your pocket right now, you have a phone. But you actually have much more than that. Your phone was originally created to make phone calls. But this phone now has a calculator, a watch, a flashlight, even a camera. So much wrapped up into one device, where all these individual items used to occupy a couple of shelves. It's almost science fiction. Technology keeps on getting cheaper, more efficient, more portable. It seems to be never ending. This te technology loop really makes us wonder sometimes. Is technology supporting us or are we supporting it? Are we evolving technology or is technology evolving us? 
Well, the whole society around us has become so complex nowadays that even those who spend their time working within it find themselves wondering what's going on, scratching their heads, trying to figure it all out. In order to be able to really understand technology, we must do more than just learn to read and write their languages. We must also learn to understand them by taking the data they produce and transforming that into meaningful information. Justice is just one part of human decision making. There is a case, there are allegations, there is evidence, and then we have an outcome. We all expect this decision making process to be as fair as possible. But there are also other areas of human decision making where we also expect we also expect fairness such as a company is going to be employing a new recruit. Technology has advanced so much that there is the co-founder of Intel, um, whose name is Gordon E. Moore, predicted that technology was going to accelerate double the amount of processing power, which is the ability of a computer to manipulate data twice, twice every 18 months. It's also been known as uh, Moore's Law, and has been rather accurate throughout the past 40 years. And, well, earlier I mentioned the recruitment process part. Well, te technology can help us solve so many more, more problems like that. There's also one technology called distributed ledger technology, and one specific one called blockchain, which can really help us here. Blockchain is a system that facilitates the process of recording and tracking transactions. It enables increased trust and efficiency in the transfer of almost anything. And it has taken the world by storm, literally. I know it might sound ironic to want to help to use technology to help solve our current problems with technology. However, according to the World Economic Forum, 10% of global GDP will be stored on blockchain by 2027. That's almost 7.8 trillion US dollars. And this is for three main advantages it presents to the world. Firstly, transparency. Transparency ensures that all transactions that are made through this extensive network are visible to all. Of course, whilst leaving one's public identity secure, you can see all the transactions that happen through this large network. It's a little bit like saying, well, you can't con someone into believing you have a million Swiss francs on your bank account if they can clearly see that you're broke. Transparency can also help in most sensitive situations, such as in when there are employment contracts involved. These contracts and clauses can be secured onto a blockchain. So that all these complex layers of intermediaries can be actually held accountable. The, the next principle of blockchain technology is immutability. Immutability ensure, ensures that there's only one there's not only one person that owns the data. I mean, think of it a little bit like blocks that operate in a chain. I mean, this is probably the moment where you start to understand why it's called blockchain. And so immutability through this whole system, we can see that in situations where you need this immutability, such as, well, um, land registries. Imagine a world where you don't have to worry about bribery or corruption. We can make sure that none of this data is manipulated. The third principle is decentralization. This data is everywhere. 
it also makes sure that if I want to send something to a friend, I can do so without any intermediary intervening within that. Blockchain removes the need for a trusted agent because trust is created through game theoretical incentives and encryption. Instead of trusting a third party, we trust mathematics. Blockchain can transform the way in which we see trust in the world. The creation of this global trustless system will redefine human intuition, not only in the layers of a working environment, but also within ourselves as humans. We are actually the weakest link in the chain that holds our society together. Believe it or not, technology has surpassed us in so many ways, but it does not have to replace us. We can use blockchain to help, such as the cases of the legal court rulings, to help us deliver better collective outcomes for all. It's probably been some time since you last traveled, but do you remember the baggage claim belts at airports? Whilst no one single person is there making sure that you only take your own bag, everybody's baggages arrive at the same time and just because people know that, well, they only need to really take their own bag, effectively ensures that they do only take their own bag, at least most of the time. The amassment of data will render trends visible, not only in the operational layers of work environment, but within ourselves as human beings. So as we move towards a further digitized globe, we can see that the importance of understanding the limits of the mind to create a sustainably fair future for all has never been more paramount. Justice matters. Currently, 2.8 billion people around the world have unresolved civil and administrative needs. Every country has a backlog in disputes. It, on average, it takes a whooping 600 days and 25% of the cost of the claims value to even get to an outcome. If we venture a layer deeper into the veracity of the verdicts these public institutions deliver, we'll see they remain widely unchallenged. Blockchain technology can provide us with the potential to improve how important decision-making processes work. And so, although many organizations have started implementing blockchain into their processes, unfortunately, our high courts of justice have yet to apply it. So in the meantime, be nice. Bring a freshly baked croissant to the judge and hope for the best. Thank you. <laughs>